Hello everyone, today's lecture is on radiation units. Let's look at the objectives for today. After this lecture, the students will be able to define the following terms, fluence, flux, energy fluence, energy flux. The student will also be able to define and give the SI and traditional units for absorbed dose, exposure, kerma or energy imparted, equivalent dose, and effective dose. In last week's lecture, we saw that when radiation in the form of charged particles or photons and neutral particles interact with matter, they cause ionization, excitation, or radiative losses. In order to understand how these interactions affect biological material, we will define a few terms that help to quantify radiation. We will look at terms that describe how we count photons, measure ionization in a gas, measure absorbed energy, and measure tissue damage. Okay, let's look at some of the terms that allow us to define the quantity of radiation passing through a medium. Suppose we have a beam of radiation depicted in the figure on the right. The beam is made up of n particles passing through an area A of some material. We can define fluence as the number n of particles per area. This is given on the slide as n divided by A. For a uniform beam, the location and size of A is irrelevant as long as it is in the beam. If the beam is not uniform, then the fluence must be averaged over small areas that are defined for each non-uniform area of the beam that passes through that area. The time rate of change of fluence is called radiation flux. Flux is given here as n divided by A times T. If all particles or photons in the radiation have the same energy, then we can specify an energy fluence as simply the product of fluence and energy E. If the radiation beam consists of particles or photons of different energies, say E1, E2, all the way to E subscript N, then the energy fluence is given as above, where the term F subscript I is the fraction of particles having energy E subscript I. In the last formula, energy flux is also known as intensity and is obtained by multiplying the flux by the energy E of a particle. If there is a distribution of particles, then the summation symbol is used with the correct weighting for the fraction of photons at each energy. Okay, so the table on this slide shows us a summary of the terms that we defined on the previous slide. Fluence is shown here again as n divided by a, flux is n divided by a times t, and then we have energy fluence, which is just the fluence multiplied by the energy, and we have energy flux, which is just a flux multiplied by energy. The units of each of these terms is shown here. Let's look at a simple example of how these terms are used. For example, if a typical AP abdomen radiograph requires 1 times 10 to the power 13 photons in an area of 1,000 square centimeters, then we can calculate the fluence, which is N divided by A, and that gives us the result of 1 times 10 to the power 10 photons per square centimeter. If this fluence is supposed to go through this area in a time of one second, we can calculate flux by just dividing this quantity by one second. We can also calculate energy fluence if we assume all X-rays are of 30 keV in energy. So we just multiply 30 keV by this quantity and that gives us energy fluence. Or we can calculate energy flux by just multiplying 30 keV, keV by this quantity here. Since the discovery of X-rays and gamma rays, their measurement has presented technical difficulties. In the early years, Röntgen used the blackening of photographic film emulsion as a measure. It turned out that the response of photographic film is nonlinear as well as energy dependent. For many years, skin reddening dose was used as a measure for evaluating the effects of radiation treatment. There was a problem with biologic variability with different skins and also a lack of objective measure of what reddening is. In 1928, the Röntgen R was defined as the principal unit of radiation quantity for X-rays of medium energy. The definition of the Röntgen was, def was refined over the years until it was recognized that ionization can be directly measured with air-filled radiation detectors. So now we have settled on the definition that one Röntgen is equal to 2.58 times 10 to the power negative 4 coulombs per kilogram. And that is shown here at the bottom of this slide. The term exposure was introduced as a measure of the ability of radiation to ionize air. 
because the effective atomic numbers of air and soft tissue are approximately the same, exposure to air is nearly proportional to the dose to soft tissue over the energy range used in diagnostic radiology. Exposure is limited because it only applies to X-rays and gamma rays interacting in air at energies less than 3 MeV. The next term we shall define is the absorbed dose. When we defined exposure on a previous slide, we used the ionization of air as a measure. For materials other than air, for example for tissues, we use a different term. This is in recognition of the fact that chemical and biological changes in tissue exposed to ionizing radiation depend or the energy absorbed in the tissue rather than the amount of ionization that the radiation produces in air. To describe the energy absorbed in any type of medium, we use the term absorbed dose. The traditional unit of absorbed dose is the rad. Rad just means radiation absorbed dose. The SI unit is the gray. One gray is equal to one joule per kilogram or one gray is equal to 100 rads. We can develop a relationship between the exposure and the absorbed dose. The absorbed dose is equal to exposure multiplied by an F factor as shown on this slide. The F factor is called the Rangan to Rad conversion factor. The quantity F depends on the photon energy and the absorbing material's atomic number. The dose to air can be obtained from the exposure to air by recalling that it takes 33.97 electron volts of energy to produce an ion pair in air. So one ranking of exposure multiplied by 33.97 electron volts in air leads us to the important result that one ranking of exposure is equal to 8.76 milligray of air dose. The figure on this slide shows the relationship between the F factor and the photon energy. For high atomic number materials like bone, the F factor is approximately four times more than that for soft tissue and air. When X-ray photons interact with matter, they deposit their energy by a two-step process. First, the energy is transferred to electron kinetic energy. Second, the electrons deposit their energy by excitations and ionizations of other atoms. Kerma refers to the energy transferred to electrons. Kerma means kinetic energy released in matter. Kerma is formally defined as the kinetic energy transferred to charged particles by indirectly ionizing radiation per unit mass. The unit of kerma is the gray, where we already said the gray is equal to one joule per kilogram. For diagnostic energies, kerma and dose are approximately the same. The effectiveness of different types of radiation to produce a particular chemical or biological effect varies with the linear energy transfer or LET of the radiation. Recall that LET is the energy deposited per unit part of incident radiation. The equivalent dose was defined to account for this variation. Equivalent dose is the amount of radiation modified to indicate the degree of biological damage in humans. The definition of equivalent dose is H, where H is equal to the absorbed dose multiplied by a radiation weighting factor W subscript R. W subscript R is also called the quality factor of the radiation. The traditional unit is the REM, which means radiation equivalent man. The SI unit is the sievert. One sievert is equal to 100 rem. On this slide, we see different radiation weighting factors. For X-rays, gamma rays, and electrons, radiation weighting factor is 1. For protons greater than 2 MeV, the radiation weighting factor is 5. And for neutrons, you can see the radiation weighting factor ranges between 5 and 20, depending upon the energy. For alpha particles and other multiply charged particles, radiation weighting factor is 20. So in our diagnostic energy range, because we have for X-rays and gamma rays a radiation weighting factor of one, we can say that the absorbed dose is equal to the equivalent dose. We can refine further the concept of equivalent dose by taking into account the effect of radiation on specific organs in an individual, so as to estimate the overall detriment to the individual. We use the term effective dose for that. The effective dose is used to compare the effect of irradiating certain organs to irradiating the whole body. It accounts for cancer mortality as well as hereditary effects. Effective dose is equal to the equivalent dose multiplied by a tissue weighting factor for each organ. The traditional unit is the REM and the SI unit is the sievert. One sievert is equal to 100 REM. This slide presents a table of tissue weighting factors. On this table, we have the highest tissue weighting factors of 0.012 for various tissues listed over here. 
The next highest tissue weighting factor is for the gonads at 0 0.08, and the lowest tissue weighting factor is for bone, brain, salivary gland, and skin. Note that the sum of all tissue weighting factors should add up to equal 1, and you can think of it as a percentage, so the sum of all tissue weighting factors should be 100%. This table is a summary of the definitions we have learned so far. We have the quantity listed, the SI unit, and the traditional unit. The symbol is given as well as a conversion between the traditional unit and the SI unit. We learned about equivalent dose and effective dose in the previous slides as well as the absorbed dose to tissue. We can use this information now in radiation protection for different situations. Effective dose is used in estimating population risk. Population risk refers to the induction of additional cancers in the population as well as hereditary effects. In diagnostic imaging, equivalent dose or absorbed dose is used in estimating deterministic effects like skin damage from interventional radiology procedures. On this slide, we shall look at some risk estimates. Risk estimates are based on the biological effects of ionizing radiation committee's report, known as BS7. BS7 is based on data collected from decades of following the survivors of atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as well as survivors of radiation accidents, people irradiated for medical reasons, radium dial painters from the early 20th century, and other radiation-related events. Based on the BS7 report, the generally accepted risk of radiation-induced effect is 0 0.057 per sievert. We can apply this to a CT scan. For example, suppose a body CT scan reports a DLP of 300 milligray centimeters. We can use the K factor for body scans of 0 0.017 millisieverts per milligray centimeter to get an effective dose of 5.1 millisieverts. We can then multiply this effective dose number with a risk factor of 0 0.057 per sievert to get 0 0.0002907. The inverse of this number gives us the risk estimate of one additional fatal cancer above natural incidence in 34, 39 patients scanned at this dose level. A model of the BS7 data was created to explain the relationship between dose and the biologic response or effect to the dose. For cancer, particularly solid tumors, the BS7 data follows a linear no-threshold dose-response relationship. For leukemia, the response is linear quadratic. In general, the risk is higher the higher the dose and vice versa. At low dose levels as seen in medical imaging, particularly in diagnostic imaging, there is a lot of uncertainty about the effect of dose on cancer induction. A simple rule of thumb to use is that risk of fatal cancer induction is 5% per sievert. It is worth noting that BS7 risk estimates are available for males, females, and children. Also, note that risk estimates for cancer induction are not for individual patients, but are rather population risks. This table presents excess cancer mortality by age and by site for people exposed to 100 mg of radiation. We see that for males as well as females, the excess cancer mortality is highest for people who were children at the time of irradiation and decreases as the age of irradiation increases. When we look at the average of the total numbers, we see that the excess cancer mortality is highest for females than for males. This result is also reflected in the graph shown on the left. We can use the numbers on this table to estimate the population risk for various diagnostic procedures. We can use the rule of thumb estimate of 5% per sievert if we want to state the risk as a percentage. If not, we can use the value of 0 0.05 per sievert and invert the result so that we can report the risk estimate as, say, 1 in hundreds or 1 in thousands. Let's look at an example. For CT head procedures on this table where the average dose is 2 millisieverts, we can calculate population risk by multiplying 2 millisieverts by 5% per sievert. This gives us a risk estimate of fatal cancer induction of 100 of 1% above the natural incidence. If on the other hand, we want to use 0 0.05 per sievert, we will first divide 0 0.05 by 1000 to convert to 0 0.05 per 1000 millisieverts, then multiply by 2 millisieverts. This gives us 0 0.0001. We can invert that to get 1 in 10,000 as the risk estimate of cancer induction. This table shows the expression of relative risks for different age and gender groups for exposure to a thoracic CT scan. 
we can see that the risk is highest for children of any gender compared to adults of the same gender. For intergender comparisons, the risk is generally higher for females of any age compared to males of a comparable age. For deterministic effects such as skin damage, we can use the peak skin dose or PSD. For patients who undergo procedures in the cat labs, because of high doses involved, we typically want to calculate the peak skin dose for that patient. Peak skin dose is a deterministic effect that has a threshold for the effect to occur. Peak skin dose is calculated from cumulative dose displayed on the imaging console as well as various correction factors applied to the displayed dose. Peak skin dose is patient-specific and is used to estimate the risk of skin damage to the patient. This table shows you various threshold doses for different skin effects to occur. These threshold doses are applicable to patient doses, particularly in the interventional suites. Note that the dose unit used for deterministic effect is milligray or gray. Here is a summary of the quantities we have just learned about. Exposure describes the ionization of air. The traditional unit is the Röntgen and the SI unit is Coulomb per kilogram. Absorbed dose is the energy deposited in materials and had the traditional unit of RAD and the SI unit of gray. One gray is one joule per kilogram. Equivalent dose indicates biological damage in humans. The traditional unit is the REM and the SI unit is sievert. Effective dose relates partial body irradiation to whole body irradiation. Traditional unit is REM and the SI unit is sievert. Here are a few questions to finish up. First question, which unit is the appropriate descriptor for skin dose to a patient during an interventional fluoroscopy procedure? Your choices are milligray or millisievert. The correct choice is milligray. The next question, which of these is the traditional unit for absorbed dose? The choices are REM, RAD, gray, sievert. The correct choice is RAD. Next question, which is the appropriate unit for calculating population risks for a radiographic exposure? The choices are milligray, coulomb per kilogram, millisievert, joules per kilogram. The correct choice is millisievert. Next question, when calculating equivalent dose, the radiation with the highest weighting factor is and your choices are X-rays, neutrons, electrons, gamma rays. The correct choice is neutrons. Next question. When calculating effective dose, the tissue with the lowest weighting factor is, and the choices are gonads, breast, bone marrow, brain. The correct choice is brain. Next question. When converting exposure to dose, which of these has the highest F factor? The choices are bone, fat, soft tissue, brain matter. The correct choice is bone. This is the last question. Thank you for watching this presentation.